Okay, so hi, my name is Marcelo and I'm a PhD student at Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and I'm going to present the Open Instance Power System Library, the OpenAPSL for short, which is a modelical library for power system stability analysis. And this presentation was made by Manuel, Sergio, Luigi, Maxime and me. And let's start with a little bit of a background here. So we basically need models in order to perform complex studies and difficult analysis. And since the very beginning of the field of our systems, models have been developed to help us understand the phenomena related to power systems. The network nowadays is way different from how it was 50 years ago. And because of that, we needed to improve, extend, enhance our models so we could perform reliable studies still. But why this is important? Well, if we fail to anticipate events, we might end up having to pay really high costs. And we can find many of such events in, uh, in our recent history. For example, this August 14th in 2003, uh, this was an event that uh, ended up with a Northeastern interconnection blackout in North America, okay? So now we know how important models are, but what kind of power system models are we talking about here in this presentation? First, let's try to divide the models into time scales or domains of validity, if you prefer. Electromagnetic transients are normally associated with small time const constants, okay? So less than a millisecond. And power system models here are no, normally discretized and it might be really challenging to simulate large grids using this approach. On electromechanical transients, we have a time scale that goes from milliseconds to actually tens of seconds. And, sorry, and uh, the models here are simplified and solvers usually do not operate discrete events. And for quasi-state dynamics, the models are simplified even further and differential equations are replaced by algebraic equations. Okay? And open a cell stands actually here in the positive sequence RMS or phasor domain simulation. So it's perfect for electromechanical transients. All right, but let's try to think about the Modelica and power systems, okay? Before, a little bit before. Well, uh, first of all, there are many previous and related efforts to create Modelica uh, libraries for power systems. And there are many actual libraries that deal with power systems in Modelica, Spot, power systems, uh, object step, IPSL, and actually open IPSL is an extension of IPSL. But in open IPSL, we are looking for models that can actually provide exchange of equations, okay? So it might allow, it should allow the representation of a model unambiguously, okay? In addition to that, we also try to offer compatibility with different software tools. And we also try to provide models that pass software to software uh, validation for reliability of results. Okay, so we can actually summarize the key features of OpenFSL as being uh, these ones uh, organized here in this slide. So it's a library, Modelica library, that contains power systems for phasor time domain simulation. And the models have been verified against some uh, reference tools such as PSSC, PSAT. And we also uh, actually OpenFSL enables the unambiguous, unambiguous uh, model exchange. Also a formal mathematical description of models and the separation of models from the actual solver, which is actually pretty good. And since we are talking, uh, we are using Modelica, we also leverage the object-oriented paradigms. Okay, so now let's try to uh, 
dive into the library itself. So the library is organized, as you can see in your left, okay, a lot of sub packages. And the figure here at your right actually shows one model that was developed using the library. And this model is the low voltage active current management control of a wind turbine. Okay. As you can see, the OpenAPSL uh, here in OpenAPSL, we actually take leverage, we leverage uh, text layer and diagram layer. Okay. So we build our models with a combination of explicit equations and block diagrams. And then after the model is built, we can then combine those models and interconnect them into network models. Okay. The connection between models is basically done using uh, the power pin control or PW pin, not control, sorry, connector. And this connector is represented by this square blue square as you can see in your picture in your left from all these components they are connected through a blue square connector well this is the p the power pin or the pw pin and they actually transmit the phasor quantities uh, voltage and current uh, through the models okay and in open cell we actually have many other uh many different example networks which are now located outside the main library on a package called application example but soon it's going this is going to be integrated into the main library and we also have examples of large systems for example the nordic 44 which is a relatively large system and the the good news about it is that now it can be simulated in Daimler 2019 at a competitive time if compared to PSSE right which is a reference tool for power systems but now let's talk a little bit about the applications uh, using OpenFPSL and the first application that we can talk about is that the library now has a dedicated uh, has a library a sub library a sub package of dedicated models for the representation of three phase elements and an interface model that allow the interconnection of these three phase elements to positive sequence elements. So this actually allows the representation, actually the accurately representation for the effects of imbalances in the grid. And this study right here, the ones that you can see the pictures from, uh, it was conducted to show how imbalanced conditions can harm the system stability and how you can represent those imbalances using this three phase package in OpenAPSL. This other application here uh, actually presents how the library was used to show uh, how we can leverage the modelic environment to perform a multi domain simulation. So, here the gas turbine, which is usually represented by a couple of time constants in the power system modeling, in most of power system modeling tools. Here we are actually modeling the the gas turbine in detail using the thermal power library which is also a modelical library so this is good because then we can take advantage of some library that it's already been there a modelical library that's already been there to represent part of the system in uh, in a more detailed view right what we need to do is actually just to create uh, an interface, right? This other application here, the model in this other application, the models from OpenAPSL were used to generate a large number of scenarios that were used as a training set for a machine learning application to classify the eigenvalues. And it's also worth noting that the eigenvalues were obtained performing linearization of the model using Modelica. So the whole the, the entire process was done using Modelica, the generation of scenarios and the, uh, the process to obtain the eigenvalues, which is pretty interesting, right? So in this last application here, the sub package related to three phase models were used to create 
the IEEE 13 bus system, which is a distribution system that contains many three-phase, two-phase, one-phase loads. And therefore, this system here is actually uh, completely unbalanced, right? So this network here was used to test the extremum seeking controller that regulates P and Q for each phase at the feeder head. And more interesting results about this application are discussed in Maxim's publication in this very conference. So you can find all the other results there. And now let's talk a little bit about what we are doing right now, what's going on right now. Well, we are currently developing a continuous integration and a model validation, which is, which is actually necessary to smartly maintain and further develop the library. So the models and actually the entire library is stored in a GitHub repository, and we check models' performance by comparing their results with base results. Okay, so the process of verification occurs in the following way. First, the developer creates the model in OpenAPSL and provides the base results or base file to be simulated. The models from OpenAPSL are simulated and its results are saved in CSV, for example. And the base model for from uh, PSSE, for example, provides the base results. We select some, uh, some signals and save them in CSV. And from both models, we do this process, and then we compare the results via CSV compare. Well, if the error is greater than a tolerance, then the developer will have the results and the errors to fix the models that behaves inappropriately. And on the other hand, if the error is less than a tolerance, the model is approved and its addition to the library is allowed. We also are working on initializing the open APSL models with the powerful results coming from a Python application called GridCall. So a Python script takes the .mo file converts into a grid call readable document. This document is then read by grid call, which performs the power flow. Okay. And then the power flow results are used to populate records that are within the, as you can see in the, in the blue figure here, uh, they are located as in a sub package of your model. And then the model can use these records to initialize its simulation at a specific uh, starting point, at a specific equilibrium. Okay. So where you can find OpenAPSL? Well, well, OpenAPSL can be found at its GitHub and also in OpenAPSL.org website, which actually contains the link for the GitHub. And also you can uh, try to uh, get more information about open open IPSL in this paper by Software X. Okay. Uh, we would like to thank the New York State Energy Research and Development Authority, the NYSERDA, the New York Power Authority, NYPA, and the National Science Foundation, the Department of Energy, the current center uh, and also the center of excellence for neom research at king abdullah university of science and technology and in addition we would also like to thank uh, to express our gratitude to dietmar winkler from the university of southeastern norway and joseph laera from Rensselaer polytechnic institute for all their contributions to the library development and also to Sergio Dorado Hojas and Rens, uh, from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute and Maxime Baudet from the Lawrence Berkeley National Lab for sharing their applications using the OpenAPSL library. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, this is it.